The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. As the Bonanza Bell chugged up the Yukon River toward Dawson City, three men sat at a table in the cabin playing poker. Chris Rourke, a dark, heavy-set man, grinned broadly as he racked in a stack of chips. <laughs> well, it looks as if this is my lucky night. Oh, you're too good for me, Chris. If I want to have anything left for a grub steak, I'd better quit. Don't quit yet, Charlie. This luck can't last all night. It just about has. <sighs> Gosh, I didn't realize how late it was. I can't get used to daylight at this time of night up here in the North Country. Uh, I'd better get to bed. Oh, now, now, come on, Charlie. Try one more hand anyway. No. I can't lose any more money. Anyway, I have to walk my dog around the deck before I go to bed. He's been shut in the cabin too long. I hate dogs. I don't see why you'd be bothered bringing a red setter up here. <laughs> Ah, if you ever saw him hunt, you wouldn't ask that. All dogs are good for is pulling a sled. They won't do that unless you beat him over the head. I uh, guess I'd better leave before we get into an argument about dogs. I like them too well. Good night, boys. Good, good night. night. Good night. Well, you're not quitting yet, are you, Sam? I gotta win back some of my money. Deal him, Chris. Your luck can't last forever. <laughs> Two days later, the Bonanza Bell was nearing Dawson City, and many of the passengers stood on deck ready to leave the boat when she docked. Sam and Chris stood together at the rail. Well, Sam, there it is. Dawson City. Yeah, I'd be happier about seeing it if I hadn't met you on the boat, Chris. No, <laughs> that's too bad I won all your money, but you must have learned a few tricks about playing poker. You're an expensive teacher. I don't know what I'm going to tell Abe. Abe? Yeah, he's my partner back in the States. He came up here first to get things lined up while I sold the business we owned. Oh. Half that money I lost really belonged to him. We were planning on that money to grub stake us. Well, I don't blame him for not wanting to face him. Uh, say, does he own half that diamond pin you showed me? No, no, that's mine. If he had sold it to me, you'd have been able to win back some of that money. Yeah, I'd have lost that, too. Say, maybe I can still sell it to you. I was thinking about it last night. Well, I'll buy it from you, but that won't be enough money to grub stake you and your partner. Yeah, I know. But, uh, I just can't face Abe with nothing. Tell you what I'll do, Sam. I'll give you enough money to grub stake you if you give me that diamond pin and uh, guarantee a quarter interest in your claim if you and Abe should strike gold. I hate to give up that pin, but well, I guess there's nothing else to do. It's a deal, then. Yeah, shake on it. Sure, Chris, it's a deal. That's Charlie McNeil with that red setter dog of his. Yeah, Charlie doesn't like me very well. I don't like dogs, and he didn't like having me take some of his money away from him when he played cards with us the other night. You ready to leave the boat, Charlie? Yes, and Rusty here is more than ready. <laughs> now, we'll both be glad to get on dry land, won't we, boy? Well, maybe you'll be able to play a better game of poker on dry land. I'll take you on sometime, Chris. If ever I strike gold and get some capital, I'm going to get back every cent I lost. <laughs> That'll take somebody smarter than you, I'm afraid. Anyway, you won't be able to spare the time from playing nursemaid to that lap dog. These huskies up here will eat them for breakfast if you don't watch them. You wouldn't know a good dog if you saw one. But I sure know a good poker hand when I see one. And that pays off. Maybe it'll be a different story the next time we play. We won't be playing with your cards. What? Why, you little punk. Are you insinuating that I... Hey, look out for that dog, Chris. Back, Rusty. Back. Don't fight him. You might get blood poisoning. What? Why, are you... Come on, Chris. Get your baggage. We're going to die. I ought to wipe up the deck with him. Don't be a sore head. He was only kidding you. 
You'll get even the next time you play cards with him. Yeah. I'll really take him the next time. Well, there's Abe waiting for me on the dock. I sure hate to tell him the bad news. A few hours later, Sam squirmed uncomfortably as he faced his partner, Abe, in the hotel room in Dawson. What's wrong with you, Sam? You're acting funny. Well, I might as well tell you and get it over with, Abe. I, well... You what? I lost all our money. What? What? How? Well, I I got in a little game on the boat. Gambling again. I should have known it. I had to take it right out of your sneaking hide. Now, Abe, wait a minute. Everything's going to be all right. All right? Half that money was mine. You didn't have any right to touch it. Yeah, I know. But Chris Rourke promised a grub stake. With our own money. Rourke is a crooked gambler. I've heard about him on the boats. I didn't think he cheated. Half that money was mine. You didn't have any right to gamble with well, it. Now, wait till I tell you, Abe. You'll get your share of our claim if we find gold. You'll own half our claim if he grub stakes it. That's a rule. Yeah, but I gave him a pin I own. A big diamond in it. He'll grub stake us for a quarter of our claim. And I suppose you want to split the other three quarters with me. No, Abe. I'll give you the other half. I'll just keep a quarter of it. Please don't be mad, Abe. If I hadn't raised a hire, you wouldn't have told me about the diamond pin. Sure I would. This way, you'll come out all right. Uh, I sure hate making any deal with Rourke. He's crooked. For that matter, so are you. Well, if I remember some of our little deals back in the States, you're not exactly a model of virtue. Since when did you get so righteous? I know enough about you to put you in jail for a long, long time. Yeah, you're tied in with all of it. Well, I suppose there's nothing we can do. We'll have to let him grub stake us. Maybe we'll find a way out of it. <laughs> if I know you, Abe, it's Chris that had better watch out. You're too yellow to do anything about it yourself. All right, let him grub stake us. But if we find gold and the strike is a big one, well, we'll have plenty of time to plan that, I guess. It was a few weeks later that Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was riding the trail toward Dawson on horseback. Come on, fella. As he rounded a bend, he drew his horse up sharply when he saw a red setter on point in the middle of the trail ahead. Oh, hold there. Easy, fella. We don't want to spoil this. Steady, boy. <laughs> Good shot. You got two of them. Thanks for stopping. Fetch, Rusty. Come on, fella. Oh, now, oh, he's a beautiful dog. Glad I saw him in time. Rusty wouldn't have broken that point if you jumped over him. He's one of the huntingest dogs you've ever seen. Steady there. I'm Bill Preston. Don't believe I've seen you before. I've just been here a few weeks. I'm Charlie McNeil. Glad to know you, sir. Glad to know you. Oh, here comes your dog with a bird. <laughs> uh, good work, Rusty. <laughs> now, fetch the other one, boy. He was certainly careful with it. Oh, he can carry an egg without breaking it. I've trained him myself. Maybe he'll take me hunting with you sometime. I'd like to watch him work. I'd be glad to, Sergeant. He has the keenest nose you ever saw in your life. Here he comes with the other bird. <laughs> oh, good work, Rusty. <laughs> that a boy. Come here, fellow. Let's have a look at you. Ah, oh, you're a beauty. Oh, he likes you, Sergeant. Rusty's more or less of a one-man dog. He doesn't usually make friends that easily. He knows I like dogs, don't you, fella? I have one of my own I'd like to have you see, Charlie. Usually have him with me, but uh, I cut his foot the other day and I made him stay home. Is he a sled dog? He's my lead dog when I use my dog team in the winter. Summertime, he runs along with me when I'm on horseback. I'd like to see him. Well, uh, why don't you drop in the barracks tonight? You busy? No, I'm not. I'd like to do that. Um... Uh... Uh, do you think uh, your dog and mine will fight? King mines well. I can see that Rusty does, too. No, oh, bring him with you. Steady there, fella. Thanks, Sergeant. We'll see you later. That'll be fine, Charlie. I'll look for you this evening. Come on, boy. Get along. It was thus that a strong friendship began with Amati and Charlie McNeil. Through the following months, they spent many evenings together in Charlie's cabin at the edge of town and hunted together when Sergeant Preston was off duty. Winter had almost arrived when Charlie made his first gold strike. He was looking for Preston to tell him the good news when a voice hailed him on the street. Hey, Charlie! Charlie McNeil! Why, Sam! How are you? Fine, just got to town. 
Well, Charlie, this is my partner, Abe Willis. Howdy. Glad to know you, Abe. Abe and I made a strike on the Klondike. Yeah. Just about to celebrate. How about joining us? That's funny. I just filed a good claim myself. Sure, I'll celebrate. Well, now, this is something. Come on into the Gold Nugget Cafe. I'm meeting Chris Rourke there. Chris Rourke? Oh, I know you didn't like him when you met him on the boat, but you can forget that for a while. Uh, I don't like him either. But he had his own part of our claim. He does? But he's been in town all the time. He was not with you, was he? No, uh, but he grub staked us. So he owns an interest. I don't blame Abe for being bitter about it. You see, Charlie, coming up on the boat, I lost all our money playing poker with Chris. I lost some of mine, too. But I knew when to quit. Uh, here we are. There's Chris at the bar. Come on. Well, about time you two are getting here. Chris, you remember Charlie McNeil? Oh, sure, sure. How are you, Charlie? Fine, thanks. Charlie just made a strike, too, so I brought him along to celebrate. Well, well. So you struck it rich, too, huh? You, uh, you remember what you said on the boat? As soon as you struck gold, you were going to get back the money I won from you? I remember, Chris. And I meant every word of it. Well, no time like the present. How about a little game tonight? Suits me. Shall we play here at the Gold Nugget? Sure, sure. We'll all be here at eight. I'm not playing poker with you, Chris. It's all right, eh? We'll let you watch. That won't be a bad idea. I will watch. Carefully. What are you insinuating? I'll cut it out, you two. We came here to celebrate. Hey, bartender, how about a little service? I'll be with you in a minute. Say, where's that red pooch of yours, Charlie? Did a sled dog eat him, like I said? You'll see him tonight, Chris. You'll be with me. Yeah, what do you have, boys? Well, name your poison. First one's on me. All right, right. You're Later that night on the Gold Nugget Cafe, Charlie, Chris, and Sam again played poker at a table in the corner. While Abe watched the game. Cost you five, Charlie. Charlie's Irish setter, Rusty, lay quietly at his master's feet. I'll see you. The dog's tail thumped as he heard Charlie's laugh. Oh, I got you beat, Chris. Well, I said I'd do it, and I have. I've won back every cent I lost you on the boat. Uh, Well, the night ain't over yet. Plenty of time for me to get it back. Your luck wasn't as good tonight as it was on the Bonanza Bell, Chris. Maybe it's because I've been watching them kind of close. Yes, what do you mean, my lad, Abe? Take it easy, Chris. Well, Abe was only fooling. Can't you take a joke? He better not try any more jokes. Go on, Charlie Dillon. Now, Chris, I'm through. Yeah. What? You mean you're quitting now? I did what I said I was going to do. I won my money back from you, and now I'm leaving. But you can't quit when you're ahead. I'm not ahead. I broke even with you, and that's all I intend to do. Come on, Rusty. We're going now. Oh, Come so on. you're yellow. Hey, Chris, you've had too much to drink. I sure has. Yellow, am I? Well, if you want to come outside right now, I'll show you who's yellow. I don't have to go outside right here. Ah. I'll get that cur out of my way. Ah. Why, you did Don't you kick that dog? Oh, now you're asking for it. We'll settle this right All now. All right, put it, boys. Here comes a mounting. Just a minute. What's the trouble here? He kicked my dog, and I'm going to beat him for it. You and who else? I ain't afraid of you or that mangy curry there. I'll show you. Charlie, stop it. No fighting in here. You'd better leave. Well... Well, if you say so, Sergeant. It's pretty lucky for you that Sergeant Preston arrived in time to save your beating. I'll be over to see you in the morning, Chris. We'll settle this then. Come any time you like. I think it's time you left here too, Chris. You've had too much to drink. Come on, Charlie. I'll walk home with you. All right, Sergeant. Come on, Rusty. Yeah, the money's right. Let's get back to Chris's cabin. Uh, I'll have another drink. Abe's right, Chris. Let's go to your cabin. Will you two have a nightcap with me there if we go back now? Sure, sure we will. Now, come on, let's go. Have another, Sam. No, no more, Chris. Abe and I better get back to the hotel. I'm sleepy. Yes, who am I? Well, if you won't have one, I will. Say, what are you trying to do? Drown yourselves because you lost most of your money tonight? He doesn't have to worry about that. Not when he owns part of our gold claim. You're pretty mad about that, ain't you, Abe? Well, I'm not exactly broke. Anyway, I still have that ace in the hole that Sam gave me. Have another, Sam. No, no more, Chris. Abe and I better get back to the hotel. I'm sleepy. Yes, who am I? Well, if you won't have one, I will. Say, what are you trying to do? Drown yourselves because you lost most of your money tonight? He doesn't have to worry about that. 
Not when he owns part of our gold claim. You're pretty mad about that, ain't you, Abe? Well, I'm not exactly broke. Anyway, I still have that ace in the hole that Sam gave me. You what? That diamond pin. I hope he didn't tell a lot of people about it, Sam. It wouldn't be hard to steal. Nobody knows about it. I didn't it. tell anyone but Abe, and he's never seen it. Well, let me show it to you, Abe. You got it hidden in the fireplace? Yeah. Behind this stone here. Here it is. Let me see it. Just a second. Wait till I open the box. There. Ain't that a beautiful diamond? Gosh, Sam. You mean you gave him that diamond and a quarter interest in our claim just for grub sticking his... Well, I was kind of desperate. I didn't know... Uh, you're a fool. <laughs> well, a bargain's a bargain. So you see, I don't have to worry about losing that money tonight. With this diamond and the gold I get from your claim, I can afford to lose a little money now and then. <laughs> the following morning, Chris was late getting up, and he was in a bad mood from his excesses the night before. He was expecting Sam and Abe, and when a knock disturbed his breakfast, he didn't get up to open the door. Well, come in, come in. We'll knock the door down. Morning, Chris. What? what are you doing here, Charlie? We were interrupted last night. You haven't forgotten, have you? No, I haven't forgotten a thing. And I ain't taking anything back. Not even what you said about my being yellow? No. I see you didn't bring that cur of yours back with you today. It's a good thing you didn't. He'd have got another kick in the teeth. You still have something coming for that. Yeah. Well, how about this? Why, you all show you. Oh. No, you don't. Oh. That's the last time you'll do that. Oh. Here's one for Rusty. Oh. And another. All right. Get up if you can. Hey, what's going on? Tell me what happened. I just gave Chris a beating I promised him last night. Hey, you sure knocked him out. He's colder in the mackerel. Good. You can take care of him. I'm leaving. Hey, your face is all cut up. You want me to help you? I can take care of myself. You sure gave Chris an awful beating. Yeah. He isn't conscious yet. It's good for him. He had more than that coming to him. A short time later, Sergeant Preston was walking along the main street of Dawson when he heard someone shouting his name. Sergeant Preston! Sergeant Preston! Hello, Sam. What's wrong? I was just going to the police barracks to get you. Oh? Huh? What's the matter? Abe and I went over to see Chris this morning. When we got there, Chris and Charlie McNeil were having a terrible fight. Charlie McNeil? Yeah. When we got there, Charlie had knocked Chris out and he was leaving. Mm. Abe and I went to take care of Chris, but... Well, he was dead. Dead? You mean Charlie killed him? Well, he knocked him down and his head hit the corner of the stove. Well, I didn't think Charlie would continue that fight they started last night. I thought he'd forget it by this morning. Oh, he's got a bad temper. He sure was mad about Chris kicking his dog last night. I'll go right over with you, Sam. I'll have to put Charlie under arrest. Charlie McNeil was still patching up the cuts on his face made by the fists of Chris when Sergeant Preston knocked at the door of his cabin. Quiet, Rusty. Come in. Hello, Charlie. Well, Sergeant Preston. Glad to see you. Sit down. I'm afraid this isn't exactly a social call, Charlie. What do you mean? Your face is all cut up. Ah, I just had a fight. With Chris Rourke? Yep. I told him last night that I'd be over to settle things with him this morning, and I did. I'm not sorry, either. I gave him a beating he'll never forget. Maybe after this he'll think twice before he kicks another dog. You mean you don't... Well... <sighs> Tell me what happened, Charlie. Just what I said. We had a fight, and I knocked him out. Didn't you try to bring him to after you knocked him out? Certainly not. I wasn't going to pick him up and nurse him. No, I left. Anyway, Sam and Abe came in. I suppose they took care of him. I'm sorry to have to do this, Charlie, but you're under arrest. Arrest? For what? You heard him call me yellow last night. You saw him kick Rusty. He deserved a beating, and I gave it to him. Charlie, Chris is dead. What? When you knocked him down, he hit his head. It killed him. Well, what, what will this mean? It means you'll go on trial for murder. Murder? But 
I didn't intend to kill him. But you did kill him. Come with me. I'll put you in the local jail until your trial. Well, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. I wish you'd controlled your temper. What about Rusty? Will you let him stay at the jail with me? Sorry, that's against the rules. I'll take care of him for you, Charlie. I'll bring him over to see you as often as I can. That'll help some. Thanks, Sergeant. It's a penalty for murder. It's hanging. Yes, it is. I'll go with you. But I'm telling you right now, I'll never hang for the murder of Chris Rock. I'll never hang, I tell you. A few evenings later, Abe and Sam sat alone at a table in the Gold Nugget Cafe. Sam looked pale and nervous, and a worried frown creased his forehead. Abe looked at him impatiently. Will you quit looking as if you just buried your grandmother? I can't help worrying about Charlie. Maybe they'll hang him. Why don't you think about us for a change? You didn't think about me when you gambled all our money away. You got it all back now. And that diamond pin, you got that too. Nobody knew Chris had it. He said so. Yeah, but maybe he told someone. Maybe somebody will look for it. Ah, stop blubbering. Just when we're on easy street at last. Chris dead, gold claim all ours. You're kicking up a fuss. I don't like it, Abe. You and I ain't made of the same kind of stuff. You're weak. I'm strong. You're going to spoil everything because you're yellow. Uh, now, let's not quarrel, Abe. Here, drink your drink. We'll talk about something else. All yeah, right. I see you got your gun on you tonight. Yeah, so have you. Well, you never carry one. I always do. Well, it's just that when we play cards and go home with a lot of money, I feel safer with a gun, that's all. Let's see that revolver of yours, Sam. What kind is it? You've always kept it packed away. It's just like yours, I think. Yeah, I'll let you see it. Hey, stop, Sam. Don't shoot. Oh, oh hey, why'd you shoot? Oh, oh. hey, hey, what happened? Hey, you shot Sam. Hey, Sam, he, he pulled his gun on me. We quarreled. It was either him or me. Well, Abe is right. I saw what happened. Sam pulled his gun first. I looked when I heard Abe yell. What's going on here? Hey, what happened? Here's Sergeant Preston. Let him through, boy. Right. Hey, Sergeant. I had to shoot him. It was self-defense. I got witnesses. Abe's right, Sergeant. I saw it all. Bunny, you keep Abe right here. I'll have to hold you for questioning, Abe. Come on, boys. Help me carry Sam right. into the back room. Right. I'll stay here. All right, I'm innocent. One of you men got a doctor. I'm Careful, right. boys. Yeah. Oh, Bill, bring some brandy, will you? Yeah. Sure, I'll get some. Watch it now. Yeah. Easy. All right. Here. Sam and Abe were good friends. Huh? I can't see why Sam would pull a gun on Abe. Put him here on this cot. I'll see what I can do for him. Yeah. I'm afraid he's a goner, Sergeant. Abe fired almost point blank. I doubt that he'll get conscious. Here's the, here's the brandy, Sergeant. Oh, thanks, Bill. You men better leave. This room's small. He needs all the air there is. Oh, sure, we'll get out. Here, call us if you need us, Sergeant. All right. Send the doctor in as soon as he comes. And hold Abe there. We'll watch him for you. Yeah. Sam. Sam, can you drink some of this? Hey, Sergeant. Sergeant Preston. Here you are, Sam. Try and swallow this. Yeah. <laughs> no use. Sam, can you hear me? I'm going to die, Sergeant. Sam, I want you to try to answer a question. Did Abe shoot you in self-defense? No. No, he, he asked to see my gun. Huh? I, I know I'm going to die, Sergeant. There's something i got to tell you. Yes, Sam. Here, bend, bend down closer, Sergeant. All right, Sam. I'm listening. What is it? There had been a sudden drop in the temperature that day, but no snow had fallen as yet. Sergeant Preston, with Abe handcuffed beside him, shivered as they neared the jail when the sharp wind bit into him. King walked behind Abe, watching his every move. I don't see why you're keeping me here. I had witnesses that was self-defense. I told you you were under arrest for murder, Abe. I tell you, he pulled his gun. Abe, you killed Sam. He was conscious before he died and told me everything. But nobody will believe it. He's dead. He can't testify. A dying man's words and a confession is accepted testimony in any court. Here we are. Get in there. Uh, Come on, King. <laughs> hmm, it's cold in here. Jake. Jake, where are you? 
What is it, King? Walk over here with me, Abe. Don't try to get away. Hey, don't worry. That's Charlie McNeil's cell. Charlie? What? What? Hey, that's not Charlie. It's a jailer, tight and gagged. Stay right where you are, Abe. King, hey, boy, guard him. I'll untie Jake. I'll get that gag out of your mouth first, Jake. There. I've been here for hours. No. The ropes are cut. Get up. Let me help you. Where's Charlie? I didn't think he tried to escape. I guess I wasn't watching too careful. He grabbed me when I brought him his supper. Has it been gone long? Uh, since supper time. Hmm. I don't know how long ago that is. Seems as if I've been kicking my heels on this floor for a week. There's another prisoner out here for you, Jake. I hope you do a better job of holding this one. Oh, Sergeant, I'm sure sorry. Charlie was such a nice fella. Guess I trusted him too much. All right, Abe. Get in that cell. I am. I'll go after Charlie right away, Jake. I imagine the first thing he did was go back to his cabin for supplies. You're probably right. I don't see how you're going to tell which way he went from there. Won't be any tracks with no snow on the ground. I know a sure way of telling. I have his dog, Rusty. Rusty will follow Charlie to the ends of the earth, and King and I will follow Rusty. Come on, King. Go back to the barracks and get that red setter. Sergeant Preston, with Rusty on leash and King running free, picked up Charlie's trail from his cabin where he stopped to get food. Rusty strained at the leash and set a fast pace throughout the night to get to his master. The early dawn was breaking. Monty topped a hill and saw a dying campfire beside the trail below. Rusty whined eagerly, and Sergeant Preston unhooked the leash and let him run. All right, fella. Then, with King beside him, Preston made a wide circle of the campfire and came toward it quietly through the woods. As he approached, he saw Charlie with Rusty in his arm. Uh, you got away, Rusty. Good boy. I knew you'd come to me if you ever got the chance. So did I, Charlie. Wait, wait. Sergeant Preston? You followed Rusty. You shouldn't have tried to escape, Charlie. I told you I'd never hang for killing Chris, and I mean it. I won't let you take me back. Charlie, drop that gun. Get him, King. Get away, King. Get back. I hang him. Get off. Back, King. Get away, Rusty. Stop it, I say. All right, King, I have his gun. Are you hurt, Charlie? No. Why didn't you let me do it, Sergeant? I'd rather die than go back. There's no reason for you to shoot yourself. You're going back, but not to hang. What? I was trying to catch you to tell you you're innocent. You're a free man. Free man? But I killed Chris. No, you didn't, Charlie. Abe and Sam killed Chris. Abe and Sam? You knocked Chris out all right, but it was Abe who hit his head on the stove after you left and killed him. But why? Chris had grubstaked them and owned part of their gold claim. He also had a diamond pin that Abe wanted. It was a chance to get both. This was almost a perfect crime, Charlie. Even you yourself thought you were guilty of killing Chris. Oh, I did. I thought I'd killed him. Then Abe decided he'd get rid of Sam, too, so the entire gold claim would be his. He was worried about Sam anyway, afraid he might talk. So he killed him right in the Gold Nugget Cafe and made it look like self-defense. But Sam didn't die at once and confessed everything to me. Oh, I'm sure glad you caught up with me, Sergeant. Well, you'd have to thank Rusty for that. Oh, and King. If he hadn't grabbed my arm, I'd have shot myself. Well, he saved my life. Rusty didn't know what King was doing. That dog of yours has plenty of nerve, Charlie. He went right after King, even though he must have known that King could kill him in a couple of minutes. Oh, we're sure lucky, Sergeant, to have dogs like these. Yes, we are. Thanks to them, this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, the copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production brought to you each week at this time. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Here's Kay Orman. If you are called up on the telephone Sunday evening when you are home you might be asked to name a certain tune Stop the music from your living room Prizes you might win are spectacular You might even get it a brand new car A thousand dollar bond or a diamond ring Stop the music, it's quite the thing So now's the time for all you families To learn the names of many melodies 
But Sunday night may bring wealth to you. Stop the music, win prizes too. So that is the way this program goes. You may be telephoned, who knows? It is the latest sensation. Stop the music on this ABC station. A Sunday night on ABC. Don't miss Stop the Music Sunday evening over this ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.